Okay guys, so a bunch of people have been asking me about how I made uh, this video here. It's been a while now, a few months at this point. Um, so basically what this is, is uh, I just went, I just used um, trap code form to more or less bounce particles to the beat of a song. Uh, the song is not playing right now because I can't use it and monetize this as well. Don't worry though guys, uh, if you're worried about me making any money off you, I get like a penny per thousand views, so... I'm not getting any cash anytime quick. So, anyway, basically this is what I'm going to show you. How to kind of make this, uh, what this ball here is, is trap code form, what this kind of inner thing here is that is uh, a lens flare and I'll, maybe I'll throw that in there too. I'm pretty sure you guys all know how to use optical flares but just in case you don't I've got you covered. <clears throat> so basically what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go in here After Effects if you weren't aware and uh, hit Command N or Control N and create a new composition and you can just name the composition trap code form, oh yeah, form audio. Hit enter, hit command Y, and just make yourself a new solid. And then with that solid, get your trap code form effect and drop it on here. Um, trap code form is not something that comes with the standard version of After Effects. It's a third-party plugin made by Red Giant. You can either buy it there or you can get it by other means, whatever you want to do. So anyway, once you have that set up, you've got your new composition with your new solid, and you've put trap code form on that solid. Basically, the next thing you're going to do is go to, uh, up here in the effects controls, go to base form, and you're going to change this base form setting from box grid to sphere layered. Okie dokie. And I'm going to change this to full resolution. Uh, this here, basically all this is is to speed up uh, RAM preview times or just preview times in general. Full means you're looking at it full quality, half quality, third, a third of the quality, and a quarter of the quality. And then you can customize it if you want. Um, so I'm probably going to bring this up uh, to 700 by 700 for the sphere. That's just the size of the sphere in its environment. And um, for the sphere layers, currently there are three. You can see them. It's really easy right now. There's your big sphere. There's your medium sphere. And there's your little sphere. I'm probably going to bring this sphere count up to maybe like 70. That looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is go to Particle, and I uh, generally with this kind of stuff will change this from Sphere to Glow Sphere. Basically that just kind of gives it a little more mass, it makes it easier to see. And um, you're going to change the color, well actually this is up to you, but I'm going to change the color from white to blue. That's also in your Particle settings. And uh, you could also make it glow if you want. I'm not going to, but you could. Uh, the next thing we're going to do now that we've got this sphere set up is we're going to take our audio layer. You can take uh, whatever audio you'd like, doesn't really matter, uh, and drop it into your composition with your trap code form layer. Uh, this audio. Is is uh is one is one that a friend of mine uh, that that has a band does. Their name is Treebeard. If you uh, want to check them out, go check them out. They're very very good. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so back to it. There's uh, audio react under the form effect control. You go down to audio react, drop it down. We'll minimize these. And uh, you take this audio layer and change it from none to your audio layer, which is Treebeard. Um, rename these so they're a little more obvious. 
waveform audio treebeard. Okie dokie. So you got that. You got your audio layer on audio treebeard. Then what do you do? You drop down your reactor and you start mapping um, different things to your audio. So uh, what we'll do for this is we'll do um, sphere one size and uh, I'll walk you through these a little. Basically uh, what these are, these map to, if you did particle size, that's the size of your particles. Right now my particle size is one. If I match it to that, uh, whenever the music hit 100 hertz, they probably grow to two or three or four in size. Particle opacity, it's how much, you know, basically how much you can see through the particles. Same as opacity, uh, your general layer opacity, that kind of stuff. Fractal is um, basically how much it will twist and turn, and make different fractals uh, on the screen. Disperse is just dispersion across the screen, just basically pushing it out from its center. Uh, sphere one size, if you have a spherical field, which we are going to set up here in just a second, that's going to make the sphere, uh, size of the sphere uh, get bigger or smaller. Um, strength, uh, that basically does almost the same thing. Sphere 2 and Sphere 2 Strength, the same thing as Sphere 1 and Sphere 2 Strength, but on Sphere 2. And I've never used um, World Transform Scale Offset, Offset Y, Offset Z. That would actually move this ball in its entirety across the screen. I don't, I don't know why you'd use it. I've never used it, but maybe there's a good reason. Who knows? And then you're going to choose the direction uh, which the audio is going to react to, basically the direction in which the sphere size is going to get bigger or smaller or whatever. You'll do, um, you can do X left to right, which means that it'll go left, then right. X right to left means it will go right, then left. X outwards basically means that on the X axis, this line that, just imagine me drawing a line here, there's going to be particles that are bouncing out on that line. Uh, y top to bottom, top to bottom, bottom to top, bottom to top. Y outwards, same idea, boom in both directions. Z back to front, it's kind of hard for me to show you, same idea anyway. We're going to map this to Z outwards uh, because I think it looks the best. Basically on the Z, scare, Z axis here, if you changed it to, uh, uh, I need a camera, it doesn't matter. Uh, hopefully you know what Z outwards is if you're looking at this. If you don't, uh, look up 3D tutorials in After Effects. Maybe I'll do one sometime. Um, anyway, so we'll do a second reactor because I like to do at least two. I think that gives it a little more, um, makes it a little more interesting, I guess. So we'll do particle size and X left to right for those. Um, the next thing we're going to do is set up our sphere. So for sphere one, uh, we're just going to do one sphere. I'm going to take the strength up to um, somewhere in the 60s. I think it looks good generally in the 60s. And the radius, I'm basically just going to blow it up until it's outside, basically a little bigger than the original. Okay. So now we've got that all set up, and um, I'll do a little RAM preview. Uh, I'll move this song a little. It's a little, uh, it's a little slow in the beginning. See, you can see something's going on because this sphere just got way bigger. Anyway, we'll RAM preview it. You can see it pulsing a little here. Pretty cool stuff. Whenever you get done with this, you're, there's so many possibilities with trap code form, especially with the audio react. I've done some pretty cool things for different uh, people with this. Well, we'll stop it at two seconds, four frames to go.
Okay, so you can see it's kind of bouncing here, which is cool. It's good. That's what you wanted. Um, eventually, you know, hopefully you're using, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, that's basically all you have to do for a uh, trap code form to set the, up that audio react. That's that's pretty much all you need to know. You can do this with any type of bass form as well. It doesn't have to be sphere layered. It can be box grid, box strings. And the coolest, in my opinion, is your OBJ model, which you can make. Basically, you can make anything you want in uh, Cinema 4D or Maya or... 3ds max or whatever you're using you can take a model that you've exported as an obj and bring it into after effects make a trap code form basically particles in its shape and then you can do an audio react with millions of particles to your awesome obj model you made think about it i've done it a few times and it's awesome okay so trap code form done alright so just in case you didn't know now I'm gonna show you how to make uh, how to use optical flares basically and my tutorial is going to be very quick here uh, I don't want to go too in depth uh, you could do you there's a, there's a lot of things I could say about optical flares um, basically what you'll need to do is you'll need to make, make a new layer you'll do optical flare you can name it whatever you want to then you'll go into effects and presets, optical flare, oh, I don't need an underscore. I get too used to that, I'm a web developer as well, so. Anyway, you go to options, um, and uh, I generally just use the presets and tweak them how I'd like them. I don't remember what I used for that video particularly or in particular, it's probably one of the suns because I really like, I really like the suns. Andrew Kramer, you made some awesome suns for your optical flares bundles. Thank you, I appreciate it. It was probably this guy. I use this one a lot and just alter it. Uh, basically what I'm doing right now is just getting rid of these multi-iris things because I don't really like them. <clears throat> Some people love them. I don't. I'm not, I'm not that guy. Um, okay, so you've got your optical flare. Sh you, should, you should know. If you get optical flares, which is uh, a plugin that you can get from Video Copilot, you can do whatever you want with this. I mean, you can just completely create and customize your own flare it's great you can make a flare for hours if you wanted to and um, anyway so you can change the color the scale to everything with these um, I think the most important thing and the best thing that they have in here is the flicker I really like that you almost always need a flicker with a lens flare I mean not always but I generally put at least a little flicker in there so basically what flicker is, is you take this smooth, uh, well, you can have a smooth or a sharp flicker. I generally do sharp. And I find, um, well, actually this is very dependent on it, but just to show you, you know, to give you an idea of what flicker does and make it very obvious, I'll change the speed and the amount to 40. And we'll just do a little preview. So there you go, you can see what Flickr does. It gives you that crazy, crazy Flickr. I mean, what else can you call it but Flickr? Uh, you'll obviously notice that optical flare, if you put it on top of your form, it's going to cover up your form. So what do you do? Well, you can um, go in here and change your foreground layers and uh, blah, 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 that stuff. But I like it better when you go um, in here and you change your blend mode to add. That way, the rest of the picture is um, basically it's impacted by that light source uh, in, in a way that seems more natural to me. There's other ways to do this, but I like to do it this way. It, 
it looks better to me. So basically now you've got your bouncing ball and your lens flare. And uh, now you're ready to take on the visual effects world by storm. So there you go. You got your bouncing ball with your flickering light orb and who knows what else you'll be able to do with this. Show me. I mean if you got if you got anything you wanna you wanna show off, just send put a link to it. I'd love to see it. Especially if you watch my video and it helped you make it. I, I'd like to know. So anyway, uh, that's it for this, I guess, lesson in After Effects, if that's what you want to call it. And uh, hopefully I see you guys next time. Probably probably the next one will be a view tutorial or a, oh, I don't know, maybe a Cinema 4D. We'll see. Anyway, till next time. Thanks for watching.